it, Shelby. Did it. Did it. Did it. <laughs> yes, you did it. And we are the CBS Cousins. Cousins. The dog won't be quiet. Hello. Welcome to a video that you definitely saw the title of and my dog won't stop. But... <laughs> Hello and welcome to a video that you definitely saw the title of but I'm going to explain it anyway because that's how YouTube works. I don't make the rules. So, today I'm going to be doing the Starry Night in oil pastels. Um, it's a project I have to do for my art class and I have this frame. I have this frame that I really, really like and I've been wanting to put something in it and I think this would look really good. So, I'm going to do the Starry Night. I have so many different oil pastels. These ones are really old. And then I have these ones that are from my grandma. They're a little newer. If you hear the chicken, please excuse them. I've had a lot of interruptions today and I can't, can't start this over again or I might go insane. And then I have even more oil pastels. And then I have this piece of sandpaper, which is like the professional way that people use oil pastels. So, let me go ahead and put on this, because oil pastels are probably messier than paint in my opinion. Okay, so, first things first, I need to measure 16 by 24 square in the middle, or actually that would be a rectangle I guess, rectangle in the middle because that is the length of the frame if we want it to fit. So I'm gonna quickly do that and then we'll get back here to you. Yes. I have successfully measured out a 16 by 24 um, rectangle that fits into the frame. It's not like perfectly even or anything, but there's a little room around all the sides. It works. It's close enough. There's not much more preparation I have to do, so I'm going to turn on a podcast, and I'm just going to try and knock this out, because today's Wednesday and this is due Friday. So, I will record whenever you see me record next. Hi, so this is my voiceover, welcome. Right now I seem to be sketching out the swirlies, but I don't like the colors, so I test that and the solvent on that thing there. Then I go back to drawing the swirlies, now with colors I like, and some knowledge on how the brush cleaner affects the blending. By the way, these two minutes of your life were actually like two to three hours of my life. I'm not complaining, I swear, I'm not complaining. Anyways, I'm just doing more of the colors and stuff. At this point, someone tried to call me and my phone fell, so we're about to cut. And we're back. As you can see, I've finished the first swirly, and I'm working on the second one. I didn't like the placement of the second swirly, so I didn't even end up using that sketch. And I fill in that one. Now we're adding some yellow highlights. They look kind of green, but don't worry, it'll balance out later. I'm placing the stars where I want them so I don't accidentally pastel blue over one. That would have been really difficult to change. I got hungry, so I took a break for some lunch. I did some sketching of the land, and now we are just making the stars a little bigger. This part I love watching. There's something so satisfying about watching all the different colored scribbles being blended out. I just do this for the majority of the sky, adding some also really satisfying highlights to give some extra pizzazz. I don't remember what that break, what this next break is for, but I'm sketching once again, who could have guessed. Finally, we're started on the weird, maybe like, fog part of Van Gogh's painting. That's fun. We're doing that. Um, yeah, well, 
I'm supposed to be saying it. there's nothing much to say there's my mom you can see her legs right in the top left we cut don't remember what that was for I think I was embarrassed actually anyways we're back to finish the bottom of the sky I fixed up that star only to sketch the large tree thing and figure out it'll be covered didn't like the fog part so I'm fixing it again adding some more blue and green we're actually finalizing the stars now yay stars this is a pretty easy process, just adding more depth and spaghetti noodles. <laughs> so funny, just kidding, don't know professional terms. Honestly, just do what looks right. I try to do the moon, but just give up because it looks bad. So I fell on this large tree thing. At this point, repeatedly rubbing my fingers on sandpaper started hurting. So bye! Hi, the lighting is kind of weird because I don't really film. It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I never really film at this time, but I got a lazy start today. So, yesterday, I finished the sky. I finished the sky, except for this one star in the right top corner. Haven't finished that yet, but I'm going to go back and get it. And you know what's frustrating about my house? Dog hair gets in everything, and then you try and get it out, and you ruin something, so you have to go back and fix it. Anyways, yesterday I did all of that in pastels. I'm doing it on, like, a sandpaper material, and you have to, like, rub it in with your finger. You could use, like, tissue paper or something, but I just don't like using it because I don't really think it does it as well as with your finger. But I rubbed two of my fingers raw. It's like, it almost feels like when you eat too much sour candy and your taste buds hurt. That's what it feels like, but like for your finger taste buds, you know? Anyways, that's why I have two band-aids on these two fingers and I'm working on ruining the third finger here. So, also in case anyone was wondering, I've been using, this is what I was using the paintbrushes for. I have one for like the blues and blacks and then one for the yellow, but this is just, this is just paint cleaner, which is kind of weird. Like, you can add water to pastels, and it'll kind of make them creamier and easier to, like, blend with your fingers. And I didn't use water. I used brush cleaner. And it worked really, really well. It kind of, like, takes the pain out of your fingers a little bit. Sorry, there's a hair on my painting, and it's really bothering me. It's not a painting. I don't know what to call it. A pastel? It's a pastel. But anyways... I'm kind of liking how it looks. I went for a more blended look than Van Gogh did, but he was also using like actual paint, I think. And if you see his in person, it's like built up. It's almost like 3D. Like you could, obviously you could touch it. It's real, but like you're not, sp any, <laughs> it's like built up to get like the effect of like the different colors because with just pastels, they blend so much that you just get a lot of green, which is fine, but it's not really what the, Van Gogh's looks like so you get kind of the idea with this but I'm gonna try and finish the lower half of this which is like the mountains and the little make-believe village he did which I'm not sure that I have room to do the village and if I don't I really don't want to do it because that seems like the hardest part so if I don't have enough room I'm not gonna crunch it on the page because I don't even really care about it I just like the sky so that's that. I think that's everything. Also, I was using Q-tips to get around the edges. Not that anyone cares. So yeah, I'm going to try and finish the, like, I never really understood the moon, I guess. The sun. I think this is, like, early in the morning, right when the sun's starting to rise, so maybe it's the sun. I'm not sure. But I'm going to try and finish that and then finish the lower half of this. And then we'll clean the frame. Let's get into it. <laughs> this is day two's voiceover. Hello. Today we start strong, trying to redeem the moon. Now I'm fixing up the edges of the black thing and then start working on the ground. I ended up making my piece too large, cutting off all of the little village. I was dreading having to do detail work with pastels in the first place, so I really don't even care. These mountains were hard enough to figure out. I also find this super satisfying to watch. My fingers were hurting bad, so I took a break for some beef jerky. When I came back, I finished the mountains and started on this weird stretch of land at the bottom. I found the colors really hard to get right, yet somehow it turned decent, I think. 
with the ground basically down, I did the top of the church. Thankfully, because I had accidentally cut everything else out, filled in the last blank, and voila! Okay, so I've just finished it. I'm not going to show you right now. I'm going to wait for it to dry, and I'm going to cut the excess. I'm going to cut the excess off the sides, and I'm going to clean the frame, and then we'll have a final reveal. I'm excited. I think it turned out okay. I guess we'll see. You can be the judge of how good it is, I guess. Okay, I have cut out the excess like I said I would, and I have cleaned the frame. So, thank you for watching. If you're still here and you're listening, thank you. And cue the montage. Bye.